Achtung, Achtung! Welcome to We Have Ways of Making You Talk, the Second World War podcast with me, Al Murray, and James Holland. Analysis of 75mm Sherman tank casualties suffered between 6th June and 10th July, 1944, report number 12. Should we talk about that? Because <laughs> you've said, you've, over the weekend, I, I've had a very pleasant weekend. I went to a wedding on Saturday, and I oh, don't how really nice. like... How was I don't, it? Well, I don't like weddings, but this one was absolutely... I love I just, a wedding. Oh, I can't bear them. Really? I can't bear them. Oh, God. You enjoyed your own, though. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, but but no, but but no, I don't I don't like going to them. But this was an absolutely one. It was a lovely, lovely wedding. How, and I how stayed, nice! I stayed at the Wivenhoe House Hotel outside Colchester, and yeah. you know how the Second World War just sort of follows follows everyone around if they if does. they've got their eyes open. It does. Yeah. Well, it just so happens at the Wivenhoe House Hotel, you walk in the lobby. And yeah, it sounds a, familiar. It's, it's, it's founding, sounding Second World War already. There's the, but there's a winged, there's a winged dagger, or a flaming Ooh, Excalibur. It's Wivenhoe. Uh, I've been to Wivenhoe. It's lovely. Yeah, the, this plaque is dedicated to the officers and men of the Second Special Air Service Regiment who fought with great distinction behind enemy lines for the liberation of Europe in World War Two, and who were disbanded here at Wivenhoe Park on in December 1945. So, two SAS were closed down at Wivenhoe Park. Um, at that hotel I stayed at. And so it's that thing of, oh, it's everywhere. It's actually yeah. everywhere. And I, Isn't and, that and, amazing? And it is, it's the ab- it's your absolute classic place that was obviously the headquarters of a thing like, you know, it's a country ha- home on an estate somewhere. Um, mm. I mean, it's, the, it's on the site of the University of Colchester now. Yeah. So so there's, 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 it's got grounds as a gatehouse and you can just, Lovely. you can absolutely see it being the sort of place where, you know, that kind of outfit would have set itself up and, um, yeah. and you know, uh, right, right. Anyway. So we, over the weekend though, you've sent me a ton of stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I get, I get quite excited. You know, you get, you yeah. get these new, you get sort of new documents come in or something. Yep. And, and, and one of the greatest things about having you around is <laughs> that before, before you and I were mates, I just had to sort of keep this to myself or try and get hold, <laughs> fail to get hold of Peter Caddick Adams. But now I've got someone I can go, guess what? Well, these are, these are oh, just... Oh, the other thing is, yeah, just before on. we get onto this, um, <laughs> hold this thought, I've worked out the whole Salerno thing. Have you? Well, you know, we were talking to John on Friday about, about yeah. Salerno. Yes. And, and, you know, and, and we were going, why on earth? So, sorry, I'm just going to do this little red herring now I'm on to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so why on earth did Mark Clark allow the 36th Division to land 15 miles away from oh, yeah. 56 Div. What's mm. you know what's going on here uh, with the with the Sale River in between? Well, I've worked it out. It's all to do with high ground, of course. Right. So if you go onto Google Earth, which I know yeah. you love doing, yeah, yeah, and you go to Salerno, yeah. and what you can see is a sort of you can see Salerno, then you can see the kind of Amalfi Coast coming around the top of it. Yeah. Um, and you can see. <laughs> The mountains sort of closing around Salerno, yeah. you know, south of Salerno and where yeah. the landings were and everything. Sorry, I've just turned Google Earth on and it's still on Rourke's Drift from when I last looked. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's still on Termoli. What does that say? <laughs> right, here I go. I'm zooming so in Salerno. You know. Okay, yes. so, so pull out a little bit so that you've got you've got the full stretch of that coastline yeah. from, from all the way from Salerno to yeah. Agropoli. Yeah. Uh, down at the bottom, and you can see there's a little sort of axe head, isn't there, of low yeah. ground, yeah. of which Alta Villa is on a kind of sort of little yeah. r- round mountain in the middle. Yeah, but look where Paestum is. Can yes. you see Capaccio? Yeah, it's Capaccio like a finger Scarlet. of mountains coming out. Yes, and then you've got, yeah. the, and then it's it sort of there's a little sort of low sort of spearhead beneath Capaccio that of low yeah. ground, yeah. and then there's a long ridge, and actually from that from paste them you can absolutely clearly see that 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 headland to the south pushing out into the sea yeah yeah and and um so the idea is to take that shoulder of high ground and then you're controlling yeah uh, so you get the high ground to the south and you get that little particularly that long bit with capacho on once you get that out out of the way you're 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 absolutely sorted. Your flanks. So it's your, your protect, flanks are sorted. This is to protect your literal flank by holding the high ground. That means no one can come or go without you knowing about them. Because the next chunk of high ground is further in, which is that Sicinjano degli Alberni, that where, where that village yep. is, and that that significant piece of high ground. And actually, what, once you've got the Carpaccio, you've got the whole thing sewn up, haven't you? Yeah. So so 
Exactly that. So that's why you do it. Because you can't, if you land in the middle of it, say you land yeah. just to the south of the city um, or just north of the city, you've got, you're absolutely, the middle of that stretch of land yeah, yeah. is your most exposed bit. And, and you've got too far to go to get to that high ground. So you want to neutralize the, huge, the high, yeah. high ground. As soon as you get some high ground, then you can put, pour that high ground from Capaccio onto Alta yeah. Villa, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. In fact, because this whole bay is ringed by high ground. And so you need, so you need to get as much of it as quickly as possible. As possible so that you control the bay, so you can resupply through the bay, so your shipping comes in unmolested, right. blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay, yeah. so if you look if you look to the north of that, can you see the two a- exit points to, na- to Naples? Where yeah. you've got one that's going up to Avellino through, yeah. through Baranisi, yeah. and then you've got the Nocera, which is the main road from Salerno. It's it, you know it's now yeah. the A3. Yeah, you absolutely want to get that high ground. So what they do is they set. Mark Clark sends the commandos to go on the right hand side of that road, and yeah. the um, rangers to go on the left hand side of that road, yeah. and they get it. Yeah. So that's that's a big tick. Yeah. So actually, his whole his, his his layout of his forces is looking a lot better. And what he does is he drops one of the regimental combat teams from the forty fifth division north of the Sele River, yeah, yeah, and yeah. another one just south of the Sele River. And that happens on the tenth. The right. reason he can't do it on the ninth is because he hasn't got enough shipping. So he's yeah, got to yeah, get yeah. the thirty sixth for sure, and then he can yeah. use those landing craft yeah. to ferry the the forty fifth to, to shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that so I mean, Sonny, I think I think that's I think that's okay. Well, I mean, it, it, when you look at the when you look at the the geography, when you look at the the high ground, yeah, it, there it is. So, so you weren't around, which was annoying. So, because you were <laughs> selfishly at your wedding, <laughs> so I did manage to get a hold of John. I said, right. "What do you think? Do you, am I right? What do you what do you reckon?" He went, "Went, yeah, sure, Jim. I think you've got it." So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, because when you look at it, you can see why you you can see why you'd pick it as well, because the, because it's defensible, yeah. isn't it? Whereas if you mm. go to Naples, you've got Vesuvius as your high ground, and then there's no high ground to the north of Naples, is yeah, there? Yeah, so so, and so you've so got the, the business of fighting through a city and everything. Whereas what yeah, you so, can, so the idea is the idea is to is to do, can you see that long stretch? Yeah, yeah. North of Ischia. Yeah. Pozzuoli to Mondragoni. Yeah, yeah. That that's where they want to land. Yeah. Because you've got no high ground at all. Hmm. And and you know, um Cancello, you know, you've got the you got yeah. so it would be south of the Volturno. Yeah. But yeah, that would have been a great place to do it. You know, so, so in a direction of, you know, so you'd, you'd, you'd split your forces towards Aversa, Villa, yeah, Literno, yeah. and Naples. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but 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 you that that's beyond reasonable fighter control. Yeah. So instead of having half an hour over Salerno, you've only got like yeah. ten minutes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when and you they, look at it like that, it doesn't look that yeah. much further, does it? No, it doesn't actually. When you look at it from there, it doesn't look that much further. But then maybe, but but then, but then maybe. There's just two. Well, the air people two, know what they're talking about, right? Yeah, the, the air people. Well, the air people. Well, the air people get to say, don't they? Actually, this is what well. The we bottom can line do. is, it is still probably forty miles further north, isn't it? Yeah. yeah by the yeah. time we well, all round trip. Done. It's a round. It's a round trip. So you, you can get there, or you like. Yeah. But you've got to come yeah. back. That, well, that, that matters. You, you and I can say, well, that doesn't look much further. But if the airmen are saying that, then that's yeah. clearly the case because otherwise, yeah, said it. Yeah. Yeah, well, there we go. I'm, I'm glad you've I'm glad you've solved that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's our sort of safe problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quickly, quickly go back to that that relevant but, bit. I mean, and rewrite. I mean, the stuff you've sent this weekend. So the, the um, so last week we took we looked at diaries. Well, well, last week for um for our twelve days of Christmas, we did a thing where we sort of cross referenced diaries and looked at looked at um different people's in the moment accounts rather than their memoirs of um of stuff and you've got that um battle diary war diary of the sergeant major regimental sergeant major war oh yes news update but, news update on yes that. so there's an update because because last last time we were blundering around going maybe it's this guy griffith because he mentions and it's not at well, all i i am going to be forever in debt to merrin walters who has yep. um done the hard yards on this i i, I don't know how she kind of weaves this particular line of magic or, or what <laughs> what access points she has that I don't. But but she seems to have at her fingertips, you know, literally every census under the planet, yeah. plus um, a whole host of other stuff. Um, so so Merrin managed to find out. So, so first of all, um, uh, other great friend of the show and, yeah. and Arden IC member, Andy Aitchison, yeah. has the 56th heavy regiment 
yeah. RA War Diary. Yeah, yeah. Which I, which I didn't have. And I was just about to sort of fire someone off to queue to try and find it for me. And Marion said, oh, well, Andy's got that. He'll get it over to you. So anyway, he did. <laughs> and we started scouring it. And, and and I saw very early on that, that there was a reference in February 1943 to the RSM having been in hospital. Yeah. But it didn't have his his didn't have his number no. his yeah, service right, number, his number. Had his right. but it had his number J Ward W O one R S M right so there you are that's him clearly yeah but the for for some reason Merrin seems to be able to get hold of of um, <laughs> the cards of all yeah. the people that served in the Royal Artillery in a way that you can't from literally any other service and I don't yeah. ask me how or why but she can um, and she said but I need the service number and she discovered that there were four wards. Yeah. who had served in the Royal Artillery in the Second World War, and none of them fitted the bill, and three of those who'd served in the 56th Heavy Regiment. Yeah. But none of them were right, because they'd gone to India, or they'd yeah, yeah, moved yeah. to yeah. something anti-tank regiment, yeah. or you yeah. know, whatever, yeah. they just weren't right. So it couldn't have been them. So then we started thinking about Griffin, you know, whether he was Beers and Griffin. Then we suddenly yeah. realised it couldn't have been Battery Sergeant Major, because a Sergeant Major with Battery is a, is a is like a company Sergeant Major. Right, yeah. And wouldn't have been... Yeah, couldn't possibly have been anywhere else. But he's not this RSM death that um, Milligan talks about. No, absolutely not, because death only comes up when he is he's recovering from sandfly fever. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's yeah, at yeah. a base camp waiting to be picked up, and the RSM yeah. of the base camp is RSM death. Right. Right. So then three days after that, that contretemps with RSM death, he's then picked up by one of his mates and whisked back to the 56th. Yeah, yeah. So then we so we now knew that he was called Jay Ward, but we didn't know what he was called. And obviously you can put pretty high money on it being Jack or John. You know, Jack yeah. is a derivation of John, obviously, uh, or yeah. Jim, yeah. or James or whatever. Or Joe. But we did, yeah. or, or Joe, probably not Jerome, you know, but yeah, 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 yeah. or Julian, or you know, yeah. it's unlikely to be at that time. Jeremy. Yeah, unlikely. <laughs> unlikely, but possible. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was thinking, do I just take a punt and just call him Jack, you know, <laughs> and sort of put a little kind of very, very tiny and kind of sort of 0.5 font size <laughs> note saying I've just plucked this from nowhere in the interest of just giving him a name, um, which isn't satisfactory. But Merrin, of course, sort of weaved her magic and uh, found to find him. him. Found him. Found his card. Found his. Then found him on the census. So he's born in 1900. Um, he uh, was born in Lambeth. He had four other siblings. They then moved to Eastbourne. He lived in number yep. two South Street, Eastbourne. Yeah. Um, they had lodges there. Um, he joined the Royal Artillery in 1920, aged 19. So no, wow. he's born, born in 1901. And so he was life, and he finally retired from the army at fifty-four through old age. Right. So he's all the way through. He was a proper old pro. Right. And all the way through. The, so all the way through the twenties and thirties. And I mean, that's all amazing. the way through the changes he'd have seen. Oh, the stuff yeah. in gun. The changes in gunnery he'd have seen. The, the way the whole thing was organised. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's incredible. just great. It's just so fantastic. I, I honestly, I said to Marin, I said to Marin, this is, you know what, this has absolutely made my week because you know you read these diaries and you feel you really got to know these people. You get yeah. their characters and yeah, you know, and the kind of things they like and the things they don't like and the things that irritates them and the things that kind of tickles them and all this kind of stuff. And they become a very sort of rounded person. But until you know their Christian name and you know where they're from, what part of the country, yeah. Yeah. you can't yeah. sort of. It's 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 like a bloke without a face, you know. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So it absolutely made my day to to be able to nail this once and for all that he was Jack Ward, born John. He's Jack Ward, and that's that's who he was. And you know, brilliant. He was 40, 42 in nineteen forty three. Brilliant. And and it's just you know, which is still not very old, is it? Let's face it. Particularly if you're over fifty, like you and I are. Yeah, I'm absolute nipper. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 old by those days, and you know. Now, when I can, when I read him going, what a do, I can, <laughs> what a carry on, you know, I, mean, that, I can sort of, I can picture him, and it's lovely. Well, and they're great. They are, they are great diaries as well because he's very fabulous cause he, diaries because he because he's the RSM. He knows what's going on. He's very thorough. He knows where he is. He knows what's happening. He knows quite a lot of bigger picture. It's not that kind of don't know really where we are and and all that sort of thing. He's not, and he's not, he's not 
piecing it together like in a memoir. It's um, it's all it's in it's the all moment, there, isn't it? and that's yeah, what yeah. makes it so exciting. And I'm yeah. and it, and it's the same thing, you know. It's the same, you know. I've been reading, you know, I'm, I'm one of the characters I'm following is Harold Macmillan, and it's fascinating. You know, it was his later <laughs> prime minister and stuff, but he was yeah. the resident minister out there. You know, he's completely involved with the negotiations with the Italians. Yeah, and he's going. This is going to happen. You know, the Italians want this. The you know the the democratic politicians want X. Yeah, um, maybe they'll work it all out, but I'm going to put a you know I'm going to put good money on the following happening, <laughs> and it absolutely happens as he predicts. Yeah. And it's, yeah, you know, yeah. it's great seeing that in the diary because of course he doesn't know when he's writing that diary. Yeah, yeah he doesn't so, know what's what's you know, going to so turn out. So he's absolutely out. nailed it, which made you know sort of he goes up in your estimation a little bit. Yeah, um, but but. But then I was sort of thinking, well, I, I needed someone from from the seventy eighth division to follow, and and the guy I was going to follow, it sort of, I just wasn't sort of quite feeling it for for whatever yeah. reason, and uh, largely because it was a memoir, and although it was clearly written by his by its um you know from diaries, it just didn't quite kind of you yeah. know I sort of I'm completely wedded to this whole kind of in the moment thing now, so I went back to the brilliant Irish Brigade website which is run by Richard and Eddie O'Sullivan who are brothers yeah. yeah and they do brilliant brilliant work and and they're what they're keen to do is they they think the future is they're, they're basically their principle is is there's attics everywhere full of of diaries and forgotten stuff from the war because you know if you had six million people that suggests mm. that probably half the population of the country today had a relative that was serving in the second world war yeah yeah it's a reasonable assumption you know so that's what you know 35 million people in this country yeah have a or 40 million or whatever have a direct connection to someone in the second world war and there's probably some stuff somewhere yeah you know, not of everyone but there probably is and and let's get it you know and people don't know what to do with it and digitize it photograph it and put it yeah. on, online i mean i'm gonna as soon as i've i've got myself into gear i'm gonna get jack ward's diary and and i've taken all the scans and everything i will put it up on my website and i'd be delighted yeah. if anyone else wants to read it and use it yeah um and and that's their principle anyway so They've got various eyewitness accounts and stuff and war diaries and things on their brilliant website. And I've always yeah. got a bit of a soft spot for the for the for the Irish Brigade because of what they did in Sicily at uh, uh, Centuripe and, and and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And blow me down, there are these amazing letters by Lawrence Franklin Vale. Yeah. Who was actually an Australian. Now, that ended up fine for for the foes, the, the yeah. um uh, the Royal Irish Fusiliers. Yeah, I've read these over the weekend. So I then printed them off and put them onto a Word document, gave them to you. I mean, geez, they're stunning, they're, aren't they? They are, and then it's. I mean, it, it, I mean, it, obviously, we're, I think we're gonna we're gonna do something with these, like use them as an audiobook or something, or because they're writ. It's the drama in them. It's as if they're written by a novelist. They're like an, you know, this ep, ep, epistolary novels, whatever they're called. Mm. Yes. You know, we're, we're, we're like 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 um, <clears throat> uh, Dracula is one of those books where it's. Um, mm. Or letters, and yeah. and the, the stories told through people's correspondence to each other, and yeah. we don't have his wife's letters, but we have his, and and again, no, we have his, we, his response to his wife's letters. So yeah, he knows so what his wife's response, saying. yeah, exactly. And also, what's really interesting is him going, "I had two airmails from you." Uh, it's always one the same old thing. Letter. They're all diaries and he, letters. They're all obsessed with letters. They're all he's obsessed completely with obsessed with the mail, and there's they the bit all where, are. where the newspapers come in, and he's like, "Oh, you know, it's interesting to get papers. Can you send me a copy of the spec? Can you send me the Spectator?" And I guess yeah, the, the new time, statesman, he the wants. new statesman, isn't it? It's the new statesman, isn't it? And I, and the Times would be good. You know, if you can afford the Times, I think you should buy it because it's kind of right, it's kind of accurate, and yeah. and all the stuff she's she's got problems with a tenant who hasn't paid her. Yes. And he's going, I can't believe she's treated you Let like this. Let me write to him. I'll Let, put it, you know, I'll yeah, tell exactly. her what for. Exactly. Give me, give me, yeah, give me her address and I'll, I'll, she'll get a letter from me, the like of which she's never, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. And he sort of, um, he sort of goes up and down the command chain, doesn't he? From platoon commander to company two, I see to intelligence officer. And he's, and he's trained as a company commander, but then when they get to, when they get into theater, he's, not a company commander anymore. And they're and all that's a bit because embar- he's he's yeah. not initially sent out because he's quite old. He's thirty three yeah. in nineteen forty three. Yeah. Well, he has his thirty third birthday in on the twenty seventh of October, and so he's a bit older. So he's been training. So he's been involved in training, and he's been at Barnard Castle Battle Schools and all the rest of it. Yeah. And so he's not an, initially on the first lot going out, but and he's supposed to stay behind and train. Yeah, other people, but he goes. I, I no, I want to go out and be tested. Yeah. I want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to the front, and do my bit. You yeah. know, and he feels it's his moral right to, you know, moral obligation to do so. So he yeah. gets sent out. So he misses Sicily, but he's out. 
at the end of a Sicilian campaign, yeah. you know, once they're out of the line, and joins them then. So there's the whole seniority thing, and, and a brigadier has the right to kind of trump that. Yeah. But 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 there are guidelines, which is basically, you know, depending on your seniority of service. So if you've joined in 1936, it doesn't matter that you've not seen any action. In theory, and you're, a, you're yeah. a, you know, you you come in, you should trump someone who's been in action for two years, but is only joined in 1941 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he slithers up. But that's how it works. But he slithers up and down the thing, doesn't he? And he has this, this, this the whole business of people, people much younger than him being his superior and everyone being a bit embarrassed about it. And, and it's all a bit awkward. And there's two things here and, because he, yeah. he's ambitious, but yeah. he also wants the pay. Yeah. Because he hasn't yeah. really got any money. You know, he's not, yeah. he's not a well-off man at all. He's not a man of, you know, he's not entitled or anything. Or, no, no. And, 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 and a lot of the letters. Spoon at all. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the letters are about money, him worrying about money, worrying about his wife having money and what would the house we're going to buy when the war's over and all this sort of stuff. I mean, it's... it's And, and he says things like, you know, it's absurd that, you know, you, me and Jerry or whatever, Dennis, are, are, are sat out here yeah, risking yeah, life and limb and yeah, you and yeah, our yeah, wives can't yeah. even get a decent house. Yes. Yeah, that's really striking that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, well, because so much of it chimes of all the stuff that we've been talking about in the yeah. last six months on morale yeah. and, and everything yeah. else. It's just absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. But there's yeah. a lovely bit, isn't there, where he's they've just moved to the casino front um, in late March, early April, I think it is, yeah. 1944, from, from the Adriatic side. And he has heard a BBC report on the casino front. Yeah. And he says, you know, it, it's it's amazing to think you, you've probably heard that same thing on the nine o'clock news. You probably heard that same report. And it's amazing to think that here I am with shells whistling yeah. over and the sound of yeah. gunfire and the thud of the ground yeah. and, and hearing it live. And you're listening to the news report that I'm listening to back in England. Isn't that yeah. an incredible thing? And of course, it yeah. is an incredible thing. And, and, and it's... It's 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 very moving, and and he absolutely adores his wife, and he absolutely adores his baby daughter, and and he his letters are f- in a way that very few at that stage are. They're full of you know I you are my most adored oh, wife. God. I'm so lucky to have you. Yeah. I love you. All this kind of stuff, you know. Which which yeah. I mean, quite often. I mean, you know, Mark Clark signs off is yours. <laughs> you <know? laughs> <laughs> seems a little bit sort of <laughs> brusque yes, to his he's, wife. No, he's very demonstrative, isn't he? Um, he's very but demonstrative. I, I, but I think it's really, really interesting, though. There's tears. You know, there's tears at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's very interesting, though, the way that um, he is – there he is dealing with being – you know, dealing with going into battle for the first time, and, and you get that in the letters. So you get him essentially green. He's experienced as an officer, but not in terms of combat. And yet he's still thinking, uh, he's still at the same time in the same letters. He'll tell her what it's like, and then he'll be, could you send me a small dictionary? Um, uh, yes, uh, and you did. I did ask for war and peace, and you still yeah. haven't sent it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, <laughs> that £10 will have to cover this. That he's. I've he, only spent £4 and, and two shillings yeah, since, since yeah. I got out here, which I don't think is bad. You know. Yeah, I know, but it's fascinating that he's worrying about all that. That he's, I mean, you know, that he's, that his compartmentalization is going to be mated or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there might be some money in the dogs. Yeah, just say you have some puppies. Yeah, it's, (laughs) (laughs) but it's extraordinary. And we, I think we'll, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's uh, plans afoot, aren't there? There's plans afoot. And I think that they, they be, they read very well. I mean, it's the other thing they do, they they do read very well. And also, not just the dramatic moments, but the nitty gritty of, you know, we've all got desert sores and, you know, I've got a yes, bad one yeah. on my ankle and uh, yeah. uh, or, or, and the instep of my foot and it makes moving m- much more difficult and walking is painful. Uh, just all that kind of granular granular detail. And that also every- his comments on leadership, I think it's uh, yeah. so interesting because he's obviously, he's a natural. He's got yeah. a natural authority and I suppose that's partly for his age, but it's also, he's got, yeah. you know, he's got quite a forceful character, hasn't he? He's, yeah. he's intelligent yeah. uh, and he's good at analysing the situation in which he finds himself and he obviously learns very quickly. Uh, and what he absolutely recognises, well, there's two things. First of all, he's good, he's, he's good w- w- when the kind of shit is hitting the fan, yeah. he's a good man in a crisis. He doesn't yeah. flap. Yeah, he, he he's okay with shell fire. He's okay being under fire. He's discovered that he can take it. Yeah, you know, afterwards yeah. it's all a bit shaky and nerves are stretched and all the rest of it. But in the heat of the moment, he, he doesn't panic. Yes, yeah, and, and, that's, that, and that's a good thing. There's one encounter particularly where they, where the Germans break through in the centre of the position, start machine gunning the HQ, um, uh, HQ platoon, and he's told get your company up there and sort it out, and uh, that's the order. 
get your company up there, um, uh, will you? And and fix this problem. And he says something like, you know, a, a, an order I, I dreaded to receive, but he does it. He gets yeah. up there and he and he and it, it all goes very well. He, I I think they're they're fascinating because because of, of how revealing they are about about how he's coping with the pressure as well that he's. Yeah. Obviously, there are times where he goes away and has a has a cry or has a like has to pull himself together. A bit of time out. A bit of time out. A bit of me time to just sort himself out. And again, without without going into it, there's a bit where he really has to sort of put himself back together. Yes. And that's absolutely fascinating. And that that that, that, that trouble lo- doesn't go away ever. Uh, uh, but 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 also he what what he he understands instinctively that you have to lead by example. Yeah. That you have to you have to show when 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 the chaps are worried, you've got to prance around like you don't care. Yeah. And that's just what you have to do as a company yeah. commander or as a platoon commander. You just got to do it. Yeah. A- and he he doesn't sit there getting overly worried about it. And he mm. and he gets very blase there about shells and things. He sort yeah. of goes, you know, you've just you know, after a few weeks of this, you you work out very quickly which one's gonna come for you and which one yeah. isn't. Yeah, and you want to, and, and you know, and and having a kind of sort of a consciously studied sort of devil may care sort of sang foire about the dangers. Yeah, is quite interesting. And when yeah. he's company commander, he doesn't lose a single man for kind of four months. And that's largely because they're not really doing anything. Yeah, but 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 you know, since crossing the Sangro, they don't have that many major incidents until they go up to casino. Yeah, yeah. largely because they're so. Badly decimated, but yeah, but, you know, he 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 sort of analysing the statistics and all the rest of it to kind of make himself and his wife feel better. Mm. It's mm. just they're just absolute pure hundred percent gold. Yeah, and news for the Russian front is good too. There's all that. There's lots Russia's, of that. The Russians and are doing very no well. No mention of yeah. no mention of the bombing of the monastery. Nothing. What's going on in? No, 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 no none of the. I mean, he's rather the impressed by the Germans, isn't he? The tenacity yeah. of the Germans, and, yeah. and, and he yeah. says it. Um, it doesn't take much truck of Italians, that's for sure. You see, I, actually, you know what? I, and I, I'm loath to talk about this, right? Go on, but, then. Well, you know, this week Prince Harry has said, I killed 25 Taliban. Oh, yeah, I thought that was really poor. I don't know well, anyone who boasts about how many well, people Well, but, but also the way he put it, right? He said, you know, they're chess pieces. We're the good guys. They're the bad guys. We killed some bad so they wouldn't kill any goods, Right. And then I read it. I read that a lot just of sounds like an American ghostwriter. Well, to me. yeah, but exactly. But I've also read a load of sort of sensible chin stroking think pieces saying, well, of course, what one does in an army is one others the enemy in order to be able to kill him, right? That's what that's what armies do. Hmm. He doesn't do that. Nope. And all too often, all too often, you read people going, they're just chaps just like me. They're here. They're, they think they're doing their duty. We're doing ours. Um, oh, there's even a bit where he talks about atrocities. He says, you asked me about atrocities. He said, to be honest, I haven't seen that many. He yeah. said, you know, we go into a new town and we see lots of debris and we see some dead people, but I suspect that's as much us, us as it is them. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, <laughs> Which is <laughs> which is literally exactly what you and I were saying last week, isn't it? Yeah, but there's none of this, but there's none, of, he's not othering, any, othering to use the, the, you know, which isn't parlance he would have uh, uh, recognised at all. There's none of that in these letters. There's, there's, well, I guess, but different people are different, aren't they? You know. I just, well, I guess, but 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 the thing is, is you know, to if, to to hear that as a generalisation about what soldiers do, you know, in the discussion of what Prince Harry said, you know, what soldiers do is they armies do this, that, and the other. Well, if that's what they're doing, they've not done a very good job on on uh, Lawrence Franklin Vale. They've 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 not convinced him yeah. of that at all. Um, yeah, but also lots of other people who've said about, you know, particularly about Afghanistan, is that you know the, their job wasn't to go out and kill other people; it was to yeah. kind of, you know. Secure the existing yeah. um, government and, yeah. and, and produce peace, not not trying. You know, you want to do as with yeah. little killing as possible. Yeah. I mean, the thing that is striking though in these letters is that he does think it dawns on him that things are going very slowly in Italy. Mm. Um, you know, second uh, of January, fighting in Italy is still very slow. You know, he's he's yes, but he also it, says, says, you know, people. Are, I've I've read the criticism that it's too slow, but he said what people don't understand is, you know, yeah. X, Y, and Z. You know, which of course yeah. is again all the reasons that we've been talking about, which is you know the terrain, the difficulty, yeah. the weather, yeah, etc., etc., etc. I tell you what, we'll take a break, and then we'll be back with more of because uh, we there's t- tons of these diaries to talk about and uh, and. Letters well, and yeah, and we've stuff. still got a talk analysis of the 75 millimeter Sherman tank casualties <laughs> suffered between 6th of June and 10th of July 1944, which is what you watch, which is what you prop it did and proposed at the <laughs> All right, outset. Okay. All right, we'll take that break then.
Welcome back to We're Ways of Making You Talk with me, Al Murray and James Holland. Okay, so <laughs> analysis of – so you sent me this this morning. Report well, it, number, became, it, it, it popped up on Twitter. And, report uh, number 12. Um, uh, and I got to the end of it and I thought, is that it? I was I've expecting it to be I, longer. I think I've read this before as well. Um, it, it, I think I have as well. I, if, uh, or I've seen it cited before. I mean – The first thing that I think is really interesting is the operational research section with all the scientists in. Yeah. The, the, the opening bit is what's real, I think, is the most interesting thing of the whole thing. Yeah. Which is, do you want to read it? That, the, well, the, the italicized bit. I think it's really interesting. Long before the war, it was evident that science would have much to contribute to the v- development of military equipment. And it was no surprise that research found such wide applications to the technically difficult but fundamentally amenable problems of radar, anti aircraft, and fragmentation, to name only a few. These problems offered great possibilities to the well established methods of the physical sciences. By contrast, the complexities of military tactics proved for a long time intractable. Even the smallest battle is a bewildering compound of variables. And new Methods had therefore to be worked out before there could be any hope of results. In spite of these difficulties, each of the six operational research sections set up at one time or another with the field armies achieved a considerable measure of success. But where the future is concerned, it is not so much the results they achieved, however valuable, as the methods they used that will matter. For the superficial details of battle may be altered in a moment by the introduction of a new weapon, while the underlying principles of warfare scarcely change from one century to the next. And that's for the introduction of operational research in 21st Army Group. So isn't I mean, that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and that sort of, that thing of saying the underlying principles of warfare scarcely change from one, it, you know, that, that, that that's that's true, isn't it? Um, uh, and one of the sort of truisms, in fact, that, that occur, eventually people think, hang on a minute, Blitzkrieg is application of uh, concentration of force. That's what it is. Um, yeah, rather than, what, but it's also rather what the Germans, than the Germans before then the Prussians have been doing forever. Yeah, yeah. No I mean, I, this is very interesting. <clears throat> it is some of it's very interesting though, because because you, you know, in the end, this very rep- so small the, number of tanks, though. Well, the, well, first of all, that was the f- the first thing that struck me is it's forty, it's forty tanks, um, uh, isn't it? Uh, penetrated by German a- AP. Shot. Not very much. Well, it's f- Forty-five total tank casualties and analysed, which doesn't yes. sound like very many, does it? No, and not when. Do you remember when I was, when I was doing the brothers and arms stuff? I was looking yeah. at all those other tank crew casualty. So, so yeah. they're talking at tanks. I was talking at tank crew. I was looking at less at tanks and more at tank crew casualties. Crews, yeah, yeah, and crews. And they and the two ones that I looked at had, I, I think, one was five hundred and seventy-five, and one was four hundred and eighty or something. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a slightly different kettle of fish well there's a well because there's an interesting bit in it where where guards where, where guards it's one of the guards um uh uh regiments has less yeah it's first battalion cold stream guards fifth guards armored suffered fewer brew ups than other units and that's uh, 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 and only during blue coat yeah, but that's because they're in an armored division well yeah <laughs> not in a independent yeah yeah, armored brigade. Yeah, yeah, but it's also, but also, it. What's interesting is it's. They say it's because they're not keeping extra ammunition in the turret. They've sorted out their ammunition distribution within the tank. There's no loose. There's, you know, everything's in its bin. Everything's properly in its bins. Blah, yeah, but blah, that's blah. all very well if you're not if you're not doing the whole kind of a tritting grinding battle. Yeah, yeah. Where 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 numbers of shots is what counts. Yeah. What yeah. what counts is firing as many shells as you possibly can at anything that moves in the distance. Yeah. The other thing that they don't say about this is it doesn't show when it brewed up. So, so yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, casualties yeah, yeah. show that show that very, very few people get burned alive. Yeah. The, yeah. the number is comparatively small as a percentage, fifteen yeah. percent uh, maybe something like yeah. that. You know, it's it's I can't remember quite what the figures are, but it was it was really quite low, uh, and seventy five percent are killed out or are killed outside the tank. Yeah, well, because what's absent from this is that this is about tanks penetrated and brewed up and destroyed. What's completely absent from this uh, analysis is the crews. They're not in it. That's my point. So, but, yeah. but, but also, just, it doesn't say just... when they brewed up. So, so you yeah. you might often have a situation where a, uh, where a tank is hit, it's penetrated, yeah. they get out, it's then subsequent, but it's then sitting there. Yeah. It's the enemy can't see whether it's done. There's yeah. se- several other ones, and quite often they get out and it brews up later. Yeah, yeah. Might get hit again. Well, they get machine gunned in the meantime. Is the, the oh yeah, or mortared yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, 
But 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 this implies, doesn't it? This implies very very clearly that that if if, if it's going to brew up, it, it's like penetration, boom, massive yeah. explosion, turret flying into the air, and all yeah. the rest of it. And that's not that that that's slightly disingenuous or misleading because that's not the case. Well, yeah, I, I, it, it, yes. I mean, I, I the thing is, is is inevitably it only uh, it only tells part of the story. I mean, there's that also that note. In several cases, it is difficult to distinguish between penetrations of seventy five and eighty eight millimeter, particularly after the tank had brewed up. Too much reliance must not be placed on the proportion of such penetrations, through, though the proportion given agrees well with the estimated. So, in other words, no one knows what they've been hit by, but they're all saying it's 88s. Well, so, everyone talks about 88s, but 80, yeah. 88s beca- is, it becomes, is no longer an 88. It's not a pack 43 or, yeah. or an 88 millimeter dual purpose anti aircraft gun no. and anti tank gun. No. It's just, it's like a Spandau. Yeah. Or a Schmeisser, you know, there is yeah. no such thing as a Schmeisser, but yeah. but 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 all the Allied troops know what it is, and everyone knows yeah. that an eighty-eight is a is an anti-tank gun. Well, estimates by fighting soldiers were found to be unreliable, since many reported they'd been knocked out by an eighty-eight millimeter, when in fact it had been <laughs> a seventy-five millimeter shot. While the reverse mistake has not yet been discovered. I mean, the the thing is, I'm not going to get my tape measure out if my tank's been hit. To be honest, to check to check whatever the round was. Are, well, are also, you? you don't want to be. You don't want to be. You you want to be. If you're going to be taken out, you're taken out by a superior weapon, which you yeah. had no control over because it yeah. was so superior. Mm. So you, you, you're going to sort of big up your casualty, aren't but, you? But what, but what is interesting, though, in the end, this report basically concludes it's the kind of fighting that, that we're involved in. And me- when the kind of fighting changes, maybe this data will change. And there kind of ain't nothing we can do about the battlefield weapons the Germans have got. So, yeah, we could upgun and add armor but there's never there will never be enough armor to add to a sherman to make it adequate in this circumstances so the basic conclusion is we won't do anything <laughs> it, it, it's the, no. the if you read between but they, the lines but they, but, but, but they don't need to do anything either well, then, because, exactly because exactly because it's doing the job perfectly well yeah and is hasten is helping to hasten the end of the war yeah and, you know it just is hmm and anyone who can take out, you know, if, if a Sherman tank can take out a Tiger tank at 250 yards, it's it's fine. But, I mean, it says, so from the data collected, it will be seen that the proportion of hits on the sides in front of the 75mm Sherman tank is more or less equal. And therefore, for up armouring to be effective, a large area would need to be strengthened. And so that sentence clearly says, and that ain't going to happen. For instance, <laughs> yeah. for instance, up armouring the front of the tank so that in the case is considered it would have given 50% protection on this face, would only have decreased penetrations by 15%. In other words, there ain't enough armour uh, that we can fit to a Sherman that will do the job. In consequence, if changes are required, it would appear wiser to use the extra weight carrying of the 75mm Sherman to take a better gun, i.e. make German tanks more vulnerable, rather than attempt to decrease our own vulnerability. This suggestion would be appear to be in keeping with present policy. So this report is also saying by by doing fireflies, we're doing the right thing. Yep. Um, and uh, seventy six so, millimeter ones. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, fireflies so, for these guys. Yeah. Exactly for these guys. So, so that, I mean, maybe this report is also like uh, uh, patting patting the, the firefly decision on the back a little, rather than actually offering any solutions. I mean, it's it it's because this obviously the. Given the politics of uh, of the moment, where you've got people talking about tank procurement in Parliament and all this, you know, the, all this is going on. Here's the here's the operational research um, uh, st- section, number two operational research section, issuing a thing that says actually there isn't anything we can do really, and the thing we can do, we've done or we're doing. Yeah, I'm quite um, keen to find out a bit more about operational research in Twenty One Army Group, baby. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. You know, all these people, these these number two operational research section. I bet there's yeah. a whole big chunky stuff there at Bovington yeah. or um uh, at, at Q, and I think it'd be fascinating to yeah to, yeah, to yeah. look into that. And uh, you know, I love the fact that that I mean, of course, we know there's lots of boffins and scientists sort of you know working around the clock to try and think of better ways of doing things. Yeah, and and of course, you know, in the wartime period, they they create out incredible stuff from kind of yeah. Boge to H two S to you know Blackett site to cavity magnetrons to whatever you yeah. know i mean it's incredible what they're doing yeah yeah but it'd be interesting to do a kind of a bit more looking into that because i've never i've never really you know i've read other books on it and stuff but i can't say i've ever done any primary resource research on the science of, of weaponry there's an amazing book um which i've got called the manufacture of weapons or something like yeah. that one of the yeah. official histories which i've got so maybe i'll look into that a little bit more but it's 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 really interesting 
Well, um, uh, John Buckley's, um, you know, British Army in the Normandy campaign. He's got he's got stuff he's got stuff about this. He's about, sourced, um, has he? Have, has he got? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, there's the thing of there's the thing of you know, for instance, welding tank uh, tank tracks to the vehicle to add extra protection, and you know, again, that's like a the, people basically go let it go because it's psychological, um, you know, because of its psychological value. Where if you you've got people like these operational research people saying, well, hang on a minute, um, you're, you're wearing your gearbox out doing this and you're put, adding wear and tear to the vehicle, mm. so increasing yeah. the amount of work that needs to go into the vehicle. And obviously the, the crews are like, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, well, yes, 100 crews, there's, there's, it's in it's – in, uh, Cruz took to adding tranks. So he, and then he is sourced. There's a whole load of um, Shafe records. There's uh, stuff at Bovington about it, sandbagging it, you know, sandbagging the M4s because the Americans get into sandbagging stuff as well. Yeah, here we go. Design and development of weapons, studies in government and industrial organization by M.M. Mm. Postan, D. Hay, and J.D. Scott. Oh, that sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big. His Majesty's stationary office. There you go. Yeah, it's um. Uh, funnily enough, um, the thing we just every, every any anyone's library. The thing um, we're just talking about is um the, this second operational research research section. Uh, John cites that exactly exactly the same document that we're talking about. Huh. In, well, in part British two, Army. part two in this book is army weapons. Part three, a whole part with chapter. 15 onwards. Yeah. Radar. The cent- the centimetric revolution. <laughs> That's making my head hurt just thinking about that one. A 21st Army Group technical reports, which are at Bovington, um, uh, number 16 from 14th of October 44, is about the extra weight adding strain to the engines and uh, maintenance procedures and shortening mechanical life expectancy of welding tracks or putting or putting sandbags on tanks, which is interesting. And the Americans also have a. Uh, there's also an American memo where, in December '44 where they're talking about the same thing, where they're saying yeah. we don't want we don't want the crews to do it because because after all, it, me- mechanical efficiency is part of the part of the selling point of you know these super standardized Sherman tanks, isn't it? Is that that yeah, you know that, that yeah you- yeah completely yeah. Mm. Well, chapter thirteen is armored fighting vehicles, tank and anti tank guns. Subsection one introductory two prior to 1934. Three thirty-five to forty-four, which is the bit I want. I'm interested in nineteen forty 1940 yeah. to nineteen forty-five, followed by chapter fourteen, speed and efficiency of design, <laughs> or lack right. of it. Anyway, or lack of it. Well, let's, yeah. let's dig into that and come yeah, back to that one. But why anyway, not? <laughs> um, we were going to do a couple of other things. I think we probably kind yeah. of. I think we kind we, of. We can we can hold. Um, um, We'd be, um, we'd be like Fertner a pair of, and Taben till yeah, next time. I mean, we were like we'd be like a pair of dogs cha- chasing a car today. We'd be just chasing cars, <laughs> <laughs> running up. Oh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> 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 Very true. I'm full of I'm full of excitement at the moment, though, about about all this stuff. Well, I think that that high ground thing around Salerno makes yeah. I, no, I mean, I'm, it, I'm, I'm happy with that. because after all, we we we've we have talked an awful lot about American generals making decisions based on high ground and uh, terrain. And boy, uh, are they're uh, obsessed with it. Uh, uh, well, yeah, and I'm and rightly so, and rightly so. You can see why. You can see why, especially if you're fighting an artillery war where what you need is spotters in high places directing fire onto the Germans as they try and uh, intervene on the battlefield. And so, especially, I mean, if you've got naval guns at your disposal, you need those hills yep. to to to, to um, Completely. stop the Germans coming in. It all in. makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all makes perfect sense. I'm relieved. Whew. Good. Excellent. Um, uh, well, thanks everyone for listening. Um, uh, we've got, we've got so much stuff to come. We've, uh, uh we have ways USA on Fridays. Uh, um, yep. that I don't know who we're talking to on Thursday, um, or who we will have spoken to by I Thursday. I think it's Andy Aitchison on Thursday. I think it's Andy Aitchison talking about Peter White second Lowland Lowland. division and Peter White. Yeah. Which is, which is yeah. absolutely his specialized subject. I think if he, if Andy ever ends up on mastermind, um, that will be the way is to go. <laughs> That's clearly what he needs to do, isn't it? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We will see you all again very soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Cheerio.